Welcome back. Today we're building a, uh, let's say, alternative face converter for a fellow YouTuber, um, Alan Pierce. I put the link to his channel in the description. Um, what we're doing is um, we use a transformer. Hopefully it's visible. We come in with 230 volts into the transformer, and we got twice 110 so that's 220 here plus the 230 adds up uh, it's it's about 105 or something like that so I've got about 440 volts on this end we use two phases of the VFD so that's L1 and that's L2 and L3 is just the third one is just open um, this thing is set to 50 Hertz we got a switch here, I'll show that in a minute. Uh, so if the switch is open, this thing is constantly running, making 50 hertz, 400 volt AC on the output. If we switch the motor on, uh, it may go into current limit, but it will run quite nice. So if we switch the mill on, it runs up the current limit and everything is fine. So. What we got here is a transformer. It's a two kilowatt transformer. Uh, we come here with in with the mains. It's just la flashed up to show how it works. I got about 440 volt here AC input into the inverter, and that's the output to the motor, which goes to that socket here. <coughs> so the the mill actually runs off that one at the moment. So again, it's a pretty simple setup. The uh, the only thing you need to be aware of is electricity. It can kill you if you don't know what you're doing. Just don't do it. It is dangerous. Um, we come in here, 240 volts or 230 volts. The life goes here. We're adding up our 220 volts or 208 volts or whatever it is. So we end up with about 400. And, uh, we end up with about 400 and. 39, 440 volts. I don't know if it's visible. Uh, the output is constantly live. The meter will read garbage because it's. Uh, so you read about 470, but that's not true because the meter is playing up with the PWM signal, which comes out. There's no loads of the crap high transients on it. Uh, I, I may fit some resistors, just a few kilo ohms, just to make sure it doesn't spark it or doesn't kill anything from the transients here um, obviously everything has to go into enclosure because it's all little voltages except the control lines here uh, which is the red one is just the uh, 10 volts going to the speed input that's full back 50 Hertz and this is the run which is permanently on uh, it does work with pretty much any inverter the only problem is um, you need to watch out for the more clever inverters which have a face loss detection at the moment the switch of the mill is off so some of the clever inverters will detect there is no nothing connected or a face loss or whatever in the cheap ones don't have that and on the better ones you usually can turn it off so again the setting of the inverter is pretty simple set your current limit to whatever you need to um, set it to 50 or 60 hertz depends on where you live um, at the rated voltage you want in this case i want 400 volts at 50 hertz so that's what it's set to that's my motor ratings and the motor rating is the maximum continuous current of the inverter at the moment which would be nine and a half or ten amps i don't know exactly what it is when you turn something on obviously you will turn you will draw some overcurrent and the overcurrent protection of the inverter limits the voltage so you get a smooth run up that's what we've seen on the mill before so if you run it up again, sorry the battery of the camera is flat, so if we turn it on, reach the switch, we can hear it's coming up smoothly because the overcurrent protection of the drive will limit the current, so you can switch on high loads without popping the fuse, because here in the UK we only have 13 amps on a standard socket. If the inverter wouldn't limit it, I would just pop the fuse, because if that's some 
full inrush um, it's yeah it will draw 25 amps or whatever at least in the first few milliseconds and that pops your fuse um, yeah sorry the fan is a bit loud I know and I know there is there will be some some noise on the audio because I'm charging at the moment and that's what it is and maybe we're gonna pick up some noise from the transformer as well I don't know we'll see that uh, yeah again setup is pretty simple we come in here we actually we're feeding our 440 volts in we told the inverter to make 400 volts only on the output at 50 Hertz because that's a nominal voltage here in the UK 400 volt at 50 Hertz and any machine will run on that um, so that's the setup for Alum. I'm not going to use this inverter because that's a pricey one um, which has some special features I want to keep that uh, I tried another one which doesn't work um, it's a Siemens which doesn't really work so I probably buy a Chinese one um, all you need to look at is you're gonna you're gonna need a little bit more inverter power than your motor rating otherwise you got problems when you start up uh, and basically just doing the program right on, on your inverter there is another possibility we get a 230 volt inverter you can put a three-phase transformer at the output and do it there uh, so your inverter will constantly see a load makes it a little bit better but at the end of the day this setup has been proven to work for a long long time I use it on, on my shaper and other machines as well uh, compressor anything basically which needs 400 volts um, yeah make sure you ground everything again this setup is uh, not that's not up to any standard but uh, it's just for testing here I'm basically showing that it works uh, there is a mains filter underneath that should be connected because the inverter makes noise you don't want that because it will obviously do some interference in radio and television and mobile phones and everything um, yeah there's not much more to say any questions let me know uh, I'll try to answer them and please don't do this at home it's dangerous yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, just ask someone who's got a, an idea about it because, uh, yeah, it can easily kill you. Um, even if, even on the output, if you think nothing is on, there's still voltage here on the output, so be very careful. Lots of inverters, this one as well, has a DC minus and DC plus. We have about 720 volt DC here, um, which pretty much instantly will kill you. So be careful if you play with uh, mains voltage. What, what I can do is actually set the mill on high speed. It's a two-speed motor and you can see it, it takes a, lo a lot longer to run up. Let me do that. That's the high speed of the mill. And you can, that's where the current limit kicks in. Otherwise it would just pop the fuse. Again, this inverter is a little bit too small. It's a little bit too small. It's, um, I think it's four kilowatt uh, continuous. And I don't know exactly what the settings are. I, don't, I shouldn't be bothered. I know it was set to 50 hertz at full rack. So that's what I left it. Anyway, uh, I have some of these transformers. If someone is interested, uh, I got about 20 of these transformers. They are rated 2 kilowatts, so that gives you 4 kilowatts continuous input power, which you're not able to pull that from a normal socket. The, the maximum is about 3 kilowatts, but you can get out there. Everything needs to be grounded, obviously. You can see I put some ground wires, even if it's a lash up, I put some ground wires there. Just for my own safety if I touch something. Anyway, that's uh, not so far. Uh, we we'll probably make another video when the thing is built with a Chinese inverter. Uh, I put that on a plate and wire it up a bit nicer. That's basically just showing how it works. And as you can see here, we can run the power feed just straight away. So the good thing is this provides you 400 volts to your machine. Um, 
and you don't need to worry about the wiring of the machine so you don't need to change anything because a lot of the machines got 110 volt transformer for the controls and uh, yeah you can just switch it on and even reverse it straight away uh, that should work you can try a full reverse on the mill I don't know if it pops the fuse or not we'll see let's try that so I changed the current settings on the drive a little bit and uh, we ran it so we have a little bit higher current so I'm gonna do an instantaneous reverse as much as I can and it does it's a bit tougher now I still can run the so the limits are up to the maximum now and it just comes on and runs nicely it doesn't do that limiting anymore so yeah um, looks good to me we'll keep it this way organize a Chinese inverter because uh, anything brand name is too expensive for that and uh, put that on a plate <coughs> And hopefully Alan will be happy. Uh, obviously he has to put it in the case and he's got a colleague which has a bit an idea of electronics or electrics. Uh, he's going to help him to wire that up. It's uh, more about a principle. How it works. Anyway, the, the most important thing is that the inverter settings are suitable for your main supply. Whatever your socket can deliver, that's your maximum you can actually put out of the whole circuit. You cannot pull four kilowatts if your socket only delivers three kilowatts. Uh, that's impossible. All the drive can do is limit your inverse current to a reasonable amount so it doesn't pop your fuse. So we can try the light. Uh, I just need to pull the cable. Okay, it won't start the light because the light motor is 2.2 kilowatts and that drive cannot handle the inverse current. It's just too small. Uh, it's cold as well, so it's not gonna work. Uh, well, we need a big inverter, we did know that before. Uh, it's just tripping straight away. It's too much current. One thing you need to make sure is uh, that your transformer has a good isolation voltage, uh, at least one kilovolt tested. Otherwise, you may have problems with the secondary winding because um, that's obviously the input is actually sitting at 230 so that's 440 volts here uh, the transformer winding must be rated for that voltage uh, otherwise you may have some trouble you can't do that with a um, with a single coil transformer it's going to be a dual coil transformer so one input coil one output coil or two output coils you can use a 220, 220 or 230, 230 as well. 240, 220 are sometimes around. The key factor is actually the rating of your drive. This drive is rated 380 to 480 volts, 50 or 60 hertz. So this is the maximum voltage you can feed in. So it doesn't matter what the transformer does. The drive, the output makes it right for the motor. And you see it only does nine and a half amps, four kilowatts, which is not enough to run up a 2.2 kilowatt motor straight away. Uh, you need a bigger drive, five and a half kilowatt minimum. Otherwise, you're not gonna you're not gonna deal with the inverse current of a bigger motor. Um, ideally, you if you got a spindle motor, let's say 2.2 kilowatts, uh, ideally put a phase converter there as well. Uh, but as a simple one for not so big machines just use a relatively big drive a transformer and that's it one important setting providing the drive has it is um, if you can set the overcurrent behavior which is either trip or limit you have to set it to limit if the drive allows that this one doesn't that's the reason why it's tripping on the big motor. 
uh, most modern drives actually allow you to run a limit for a certain time, 150% usually, and um, that will allow you for the run-up time of the motor. So it basically limits the current to whatever, drops the voltage a little bit. Uh, yeah, it, it really depends on the drive. It doesn't work with all drives, but it works with certain drives. Depends a bit on the drive size. You may want to add some extra capacitors here. The problem is you got to have 720 volts, so you need to know what you're doing. Um, because the, the drives are usually rated for three phase, so internally the rectifier makes 150 hertz. Obviously, if you run uh, from a single phase, we only have 100 hertz, so the capacitors are a bit too small. That's another reason why you need a bigger drive than um, just your motor rating. And obviously, you need to deal somehow with the inverse current. That's the biggest problem, actually. Uh, so that can be a trial and error. But uh, yeah, if you if you go 1.8 of your motor rating, it should be fine. It heavily depends on the drive and how the current limiting behavior of the drive itself looks like. Um, but that it's hard to say. This is a relatively old drive. It has very limited possibilities, but it's got a few features which are quite nice. So I'm not going to give that away. It will be too small for the application anyway. We need at least a five and a half kilowatt drive. The capacitors, that, that's a really, that's a special subject. I'll probably cover that in another uh, video at some point. If you, if you use a bigger drive, it's, uh, you don't need it really. Anyway, uh, basically that, well that, that's all you need. You need a transformer, a drive and the wiring obviously a few breakers, um, sockets, that's all it needs and uh, we're gonna build one for him and his mate can wire it up. What I'm gonna build for him is basically just show a showpiece how to do it. Um, his mate, the electrician, has to wire it up correctly um, because uh, I'm not gonna take any responsibility for these things. It's just a how-to for a particular person um, and if anyone wants to build this thing do it on your own risk electricity is dangerous and uh, if you kill yourself just don't bother me because it's your problem you've been warned don't do this at home so here's the drawing again hopefully it's visible um, I explained some of the concept in uh, my tame your motor I think it was part two. It's probably worth watching that video as well because that explains you a few other things about electric motors. Yeah, any questions let me know. I'll try to answer them. Uh, no responsibility taken. You have to know what you're doing. Uh, electricity is dangerous. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time.